thanks so much for tuning into my channel, Imperi Auto. This channel is focused on all things auto related news, reviews, accessories, classics like today's video, and much more. It's really cool because I'm just looking at some analytics, and the channel's about a month old now. And I'm so grateful for all the likes and subscribes and views on the videos so far. But as a new channel, I would greatly appreciate a like and a subscribe as it continues to help me grow. And please throw a comment below. I'm always down to talk cars and I will try my best to respond to everyone I can. So thanks again so much for your support and I appreciate you checking out the channel. I also want to give a shout out today and a thanks to Ken's Auto Repair for providing this really amazing antique car for today's history and review. Today, I'm very excited to take a step back in time to the early era of automobiles. We have a 1922 Buick Model 22. Well, I think it's a Model 22. I've seen some say it's a Model 22 slash 45. I've also seen some other things say it was just called the Touring, um, but I digress. Antique cars are really not something I know a ton about, but after spending some time with this amazing piece of history, and delving into some research of this era of automobiles, I found myself swept back into an interesting time in history, not only for automobiles, but also world history. So let's take a step back into the Roaring Twenties and learn a little bit more about the origins of Buick itself, and then I'll talk about the car. After the deadliest conflict in human history to that point had finally come to a bloody close, most of the world had started to recover. There was a new sense of optimism in the U.S. as Europe began to rebuild after the First World War. We jump forward a few years after the end of the First World War, and the U.S. now finds itself with a new amendment passed, Amendment 18, the ban of manufacturing, transporting, and selling of alcohol. As most of us know, this set off a divide of cultures in the U.S. The Puritans had pushed the amendment through. But on the flip side, it began a rebellious underground of flapper culture, bootleg gangsters, speakeasies, fortunes to be made both legally and illegally. The history of Buick begins around 1899 with the Buick Auto Vim and Power Company, making it one of the oldest auto manufacturers in the United States. Company owner David Dunbar Buick had started the company making internal combustion engines, hoping to market them for agricultural use. But as the infancy of the automobile began to take off, Buick took notice and started to develop prototype automobiles as well. The first Buick available for sale to the public was the 1904 Model B. Apparently around 37 of these were made and none are known to exist to this day. And with funds expended, Buick Motor Company by this time had capital investors selling controlling interest and it moved production from Detroit to Flint, Michigan. Finally bringing in giant auto investor William Durant in 1904 as controlling investor. Another guy with an amazing history in the auto industry. I suggest everyone check out the Cars That Built America series that was on History Channel. Really goes more into this guy, and boy, he was a character. With all the players in the early automotive days scrambling to stake their claim in a new market, Duke was building a reputation of excellence in engineering for the time, with its overhead valve engine being a major leap in development. I liken this era of automotive development to the late 70s and early 80s computer craze. You had all the players, a lot of which started out of their garage, much like these early auto innovators, scrambling for market and standardization. Apple, IBM, Tandy, Commodore, then throw Windows into the mix with the competing operating system. Nobody really quite knew yet what the standard of operation would be, but they all knew this was the future and it wasn't going away, much like the early automakers. The infamous Billy Durant continued to gobble up smaller car makers, which ultimately led to the founding of General Motors. Durant had comprised the mainstay of GM brands, Chevy, Oldsmobile, Cadillac, and Buick, much like how GM still markets those brands today, with Cadillac being the ultimate premier brand, and Buick finding its spot as the automobile for the upper middle class, just below Cadillac, but slightly above the entry-level models. Between around 1914 and 1930, Buick produced its famous straight-six overhead valve engines. That leads us to the model shown here today, the 1922. And I think it's technically the 22-45 Touring, but if anybody knows for sure, please leave a comment below. Information is kind of all over the place, but from what I can gather, this car has a 242 overhead valve inline six that produces about 60 horsepower. 
This engine was definitely advanced for the time. Some of the information I saw say there may be some aluminum that we use in this and some other unique materials for the time. Sometimes referred to as the jug head engine as the cylinders came off with the head as one unit. I want to mention that this was 14 years after the Model T and about 30 years and another World War away till the first Corvette. I'm using these two cars as historical markers in automotive development. With the Model T, it was essentially a a glorified piece of farm equipment, basic transportation, an evolution from horse and cart. The concept of what we know now as normal controls and layout in automobiles was not standardized yet. Remember what I said about computers in the 70s and 80s. Operation of the Model T would be so foreign to us now today, and each early manufacturer had their own way of doing things. This 1922 Buick, aside from a funky reverse shift pattern, would look pretty normal to most people today. Clutch on the left, brake in the middle, and accelerator on the right. Simple but elegant gauges on the Spartan dash, and some of the accessories added to this particular model are somewhat period correct. Side mirrors weren't really a standard thing yet, and the stop indicator is there is no rear brake lights. <laughs> you have to remember what the road system in the United States was like at this time. There was no interstate system that was still decades away. Most people still lived in rural areas, and this was... A transition from horse and buggy to buggy with an engine, basically. As I've mentioned in a few other videos, I'm a pretty big guy, around six foot three, and I fully expected to barely fit in this thing. People were just smaller back then, both vertically and horizontally. But surprisingly, once I was in, it was quite comfortable. This car has some areas that have been restored, such as the seats. The original carpets were removed long ago, revealing the wood floor. But other areas remain exactly as they were in 1922, such as large portions of the paint and mechanics that are original. Everything about this car feels like it was built to last generations. Well, basically it was. The term planned obsolescence wasn't in the vocabulary of automakers in the early era. It was with great pride that these cars were built to be maintained and repaired for decades. And it still shows in this nearly 100-year-old relic. The engine, with a little tweak and some love, fires up like your favorite old tube TV that just won't die. You know the one in the garage where you still plug in your old NES or Atari? Riding in the 1922 Buick was definitely a unique experience. It's surprisingly quicker than I thought it would be. 40 miles per hour-ish, which I assume is about the top end for this thing, is a bit hair-raising and feels like the end of the world. And I can only imagine what that must have been like on dirt farm roads when a lot of the nation had never really driven a car at that point. The simplicity of the engine compared to looking at a modern engine is still astonishing to me. I'm not super mechanical myself, but I look at this engine and I know I can most likely repair everything that needed to be repaired myself. The brakes? Well, they kind of stop, I guess. That was one thing I noticed right away that would make it very difficult to drive this car in any sort of modern traffic, the brakes. Again, this was designed at a time where you might see a few cars every 10 miles, not 10 cars every half mile. The suspension? Well, it's a horse and cart with an engine attached to it. The spring in the seats even plays a role in comfort. It's a very interesting riding experience with the shake and noise of the engine. I can only imagine what this must have been like in 1922. The wood wheels even add some flex. It definitely harkens back to a different time and mindset. Is there are stories of people leaving their cars parked in creeks overnight so the wheels would swell and not dry up and crack? Your air conditioning is basically the open world, and that's really all I can say about it. And if you're really hot, you can crack open the front glass. Riding in this car was a really, really cool experience. It's easy for your mind to visualize yourself in a different time and place. Parking down the back alleys in New York and tapping that secret knock to enter your favorite speakeasy. Standing on the bumper with a Tommy gun in hand in Al Capone's Kingdom of Chicago. Or even taking your best girl on a Sunday picnic, see? I wish we could have found a few more details and technical info on this car, because there's really kind of few and far between. And some of the stuff I found was way out of date books that were hundreds and hundreds of dollars, so I wasn't going to go that far. And truthfully, it really doesn't matter. This car doesn't represent power numbers and chassis specs and all that stuff. It represented something much different. They say life was simpler then, and cars certainly were. But with that simplicity follows complacency, for better or worse. 
Most of us know what was soon to follow in 1929. Things were just too easy, perhaps. Like most things in life, nothing lasts forever. And for the Roaring Twenties, easy money in the stock market sure didn't last. Prohibition didn't last. Never facing another world war again didn't last. But one thing did. That early spirit of innovation and rebellion of the Roaring Twenties has lived on through this car time capsule. And that's something that definitely will last forever. Thank you guys so much for checking out my review. I hope you like this kind of stuff because I really truly enjoy the mixture of doing some editorial videos on newer automobiles as they're released from the press and these uh, more drive historical uh, fun little mini documentary videos. Again, thank you so much to Ken's Auto Repair for letting us drive and video this awesome Buick. And guys, please, once again, throw me a like and a subscribe. I would really, really appreciate it. And thank you so much. Once again, have a great, great, great day.